This is the first lecture of the Civil War unit entitled The Nation Divides in Two. And today we're going to focus on the North. So by the early 1840s and 50s, the North has become the center of trade and manufacturing. Um, the Industrial Revolution that happened early in the 1800s allowed the growth of factories in the North. Northern merchants began trading with areas such as the West Indies and China, and a huge industry of whaling became profitable for northern sailors because of the demand for whale oil. Now, all of this, the Industrial Revolution is kind of the umbrella that uh, encompasses all of these ideas. Uh, trade was made easier due to larger ships and uh, whale oil was needed because of the growth of cities and factories and the whale oil was used to light people's homes and to lubricate moving parts in, in all these factories and all of this really happened up in the north or much of it happened in the north. An industrial revolution is a period of time when machinery began to replace human power and hand tools. And so this is the first big industrial revolution of the uh, United States and that you, we saw the improvement in manufacturing and in travel and transportation and we'll see some specifics as we go through this little uh, this portion of the lecture so the revolution began in the textile industry which involves making cloth and um, up until that point most Americans they were many Americans worked in their homes and they uh, you know, made made their cloth themselves in their homes. They made their clothing themselves in their homes. And, uh, but by the time of the Industrial Revolution, Americans stopped that and they started to work in factories where a lot of cloth could be made, clothing could be made in a very short time. Other factories, they were built to produce iron goods, and wooden goods, and any other kind of good that could be manufactured quickly. Um, factories were built by large towns and cities because of the availability of workers and also running water was very important and in the north as you know the land is rough and rocky and lots of hills lots of mountains for that water flows down into the rivers and into the seas and that allowed for factories to be placed in the north factory owners paid people to work and make their goods and that's known as free labor as opposed to slave labor. So free labor is when um, people are paid for their work. People who have the freedom to pick and choose the type of jobs they perform and are paid for the work that they do. That's free labor. Now it sounds real nice and like, oh, everybody's just free to move from job to job, but you'll see in this unit and next year in eighth grade that uh, it really free labor became what's known as wage slavery and or, yeah slave labor basically even though these people are paid they're so under the gun to stay in work to to uh, you know provide for their family and they're stuck basically so um, wage slavery becomes a term that's used to talk about the north in all of these factories so anyway Francis Lowell in 1814 built and opened a textile factory in Massachusetts he built boarding houses for women to live in while they worked in the factory. So uh, families started to send their girls to the cities and and boys also, but mainly women because they could be they could be paid a lot less than men. Most factories were located in the north for three reasons. You should know these three reasons: uh, swift running streams to provide water power to run machinery, and the north had a lot of labor, a large labor force available. People were willing to leave the country and their farms and to work in the cities for cash. And this caused urbanization, which is the growth of cities. And then finally, the North had most of the shipping and could easily ship the goods being made in the factories. So they, the ships were in the North, the harbors were in the North, and um, that was the logical place to put factories. Now let's take a look at factory workers. Many workers were women and young men who left the farms out in the country and moved into the cities to work in the factories. And factory owners preferred to hire women because they didn't have to pay them as much. On average, men made $5 a week and women made $2 per week. So it makes sense to pay women 
rather than men and have women working rather than men. Factory owners could set the wages that they paid the workers and there were many people that were looking for jobs in the factories. So if somebody wanted more money to work uh, than, than the factory worker or than the factory owner was willing to pay, most likely there was somebody else that would work for cheaper but because there were so many people looking for these jobs. And immigrants coming into the country were willing to take low-paying jobs, similar to today, where we have immigrants in our country that they take those low-paying jobs, and then others complain about that. Um, in, during the 1800s, there were a lot of changes in transportation that we've covered in class a lot. So we're going to move through this quickly. Uh, roads. The U in the early 1800s, the U.S. government built the National Road from Maryland to Ohio. It was paved with crushed stones and was faster, smooth, smoother, and safer than earlier roads. And private companies and private towns would uh, started to build turnpikes that people would have to pay a fee to use. But they were that fee covered making those roads nicer, faster, safer. Um, thousands of miles of canals were built in the early 1800s between 1820 and 1850 and the Erie Canal was the most important and it was found in the north so that gave the north more power. Steamboats, look again here, you know the first tested steamboat or first successful steamboat ran between Albany and New York City and that's in the north. And then railroads, in the north 70% uh, of all the railroads were found in the north and um, yeah, rail travel made made every made shipping cheaper, made it faster, and you can ship more things than just goods. You can ship people, you can ship soldiers, you can ship soldiers' equipment. So we're building the stage, we're building a case for the North to have a lot of advantages in the coming Civil War. Uh, as you can see, there, the shipping industry was focused in the north because the factories were in the north and the products, the finished goods that earned the most amount of money were found in the north. Whaling was centered in the north and uh, whaling was vital for these factories to run efficiently. And here is a picture of a factory. You can see all the little parts that make a factory work, and they're all centered around some kind of power source. In this case, it's water. Um, Fast-moving water enters the mill, and that turns a big water wheel. So study this, and you're going to see this again in class. Here's an image of railroads. Railroads, as you know, um, and canals helped transportation to move quicker through our country and uh, <clears throat> they allowed factories to develop in places that normally wouldn't develop in the past. So they could, a factory could be out in the middle of nowhere on a rough, rocky, fast stream, and, which would provide power to the factory, and then because of a railroad or the canals, the goods could be shipped to market. Here are the major job categories, as you'll see in the north, south, and west. In the north, manufacturing is huge, 27%, over a quarter of all jobs are manufacturing. And in the south, there's very little manufacturing. And with manufacturing comes money, and lots of money. Here's a couple of images of women working in mills. During the Industrial Revolution, many women and children worked in the factories, and these factories made textile goods, or made goods from cloth such as cotton and wool. So we're talking dressmaking, uh, pants, suits, shirts, shoes, um, and or just the textile itself, the, the cloth made out of cotton. Here's a very famous image of a young girl working in, the, in a, in a uh, factory. And we'll get a lot more into this in eighth grade when you talk about factory life. But just be aware that at this time, in the mid-1800s, 1840s, 1850s, these factories started to be built and they started to be run by, or, well, employing all of these women and young girls. Roads and canals, you can see on these maps all the places that the canals went and the um, roads went, the National Road. The Wilderness Road, these connected all these, the vast parts of the United States. 
on the east coast. Another map of roads and uh, roads, canals, and trails in the 1850s. And you'll see these again in CRQs through our unit. You've seen this document. The Erie Canal in New York helped with the transportation of people and goods. The canal helped the western areas grow and develop. See how much cheaper and faster the canal is versus a dirt road. And finally, in the 1850s, steamboats became very uh, useful. They were fast. They were cheap to uh, operate and ship goods on. And they changed the face of transportation, especially on the Hudson River and the Mississippi River. Any long, large river, there was a boom in shipping of goods and waterfront activity. Early railroads, notice where most of them are located. They're located in the north, and they go from east to west to connect the western cities with the eastern coast so that goods can be shipped to Europe. They can be shipped up and down the coast and uh, be sold in markets.